Hello everyone, my name is Earl McCowan and today I'm going to continue with my series of uh, descriptions of film cameras that I own and today it's going to be about the Hasselblad 500CM and the accessories and in this video I'm going to be concentrating somewhat on the on the history of this particular camera, the people that have owned it before me and uh, what I know about the history of it. Uh, this Hasselblad 500CM was originally purchased in 1978 by a fellow named Lou Mellencamp. Lou was a, a friend of a good friend of mine, um, and Lou owned the camera for about 10 years. And about then, uh, Lou wanted to uh, uh, have a camera that my friend had, a Mamiya 645, another type of medium format camera. And my friend, Walter Schuster, bought the Hasselblad from Lou Mellencamp, uh, along with all these accessories, and he traded the Mamiya 645 that Walter owned, plus some cash, for the Hasselblad and these accessories. And Walter then owned the camera for a number of years, used it extensively, and uh, I think most of these accessories, like I said, were, were purchased by Lou, but Walter maybe bought a couple along the way as well. And I want to describe some of these accessories to you. Uh, the first one I'll talk about is this little sports finder. This enables you to, um, to follow action more easily. You may not know this, but in the House of Lad, when you use the waist level viewfinder, you're looking down through this viewfinder and out through the lens, but the image is reversed from right to left. So when you think you need to move the camera to the right to adjust your framing, you're actually moving it the wrong way. So with the sports finder, you can slide this onto the side of the camera. There's a little accessory rail right here. And you slide this onto the camera, open it up, and there you have like a little gun peep sight. And you can look through that. Uh, there's no lens in there. It's just an open aperture. And this frame is designed to work with the 80 millimeter lens. There's a stamping here on the top of the frame that says 80 millimeters. And this um, eyepiece has another feature in that stamped along the uh, rail are distance markings. So when you're at infinity, you have it pushed all the way in. When you're 10 feet away, then you slide it back and, you, and that adjusts the, the uh, framing of your subject. And you can take that all the way back until you're three feet away, which is about the close focusing distance of this lens. And uh, so that allows you to adjust somewhat for the, for the framing of your subject, depending on how far away it is. When you don't need it anymore, you just fold it up and snap it in place, and it's out of the way. Or you can take it off completely by just pushing it forward, and off it slides. Very, very slick. The standard viewfinder is this, as I mentioned, this waist-level viewfinder. And, uh, but I also have a second viewfinder, this one here, which is a pentaprism viewfinder, a 45-degree angle pentaprism. So instead of coming straight in the 90-degree, they also made one like that. This goes down at a 45. They also made some finders that had meters built inside. Uh, this camera has no meter. It's entirely mechanical. There's no battery needed. Everything is gears and springs and levers that operates this camera. To put this pentaprism on, you first remove the film back, like so. Then you slide off the waist level viewfinder. Then you slide on the pentaprism viewfinder. And then you put your film magazine back on. Um, I tend to use the camera most frequently with the waist level viewfinder. I just like the, the form factor of the the simplified camera stripped down to its basic uh, components and, uh, and there. So I have two film magazines. The second uh, magazine is almost identical to the first. They both are designed for 120 film, which allows 12 pictures per roll. But when Walter first got the camera from Lou, the backup magazine was for 220 film. And this film was uh, allowed for twice as many exposures, so you could get 24 exposures instead of 12. Uh, Walter didn't uh, want to have that, so he traded 
in the film, the, the, the 220 magazine for the 120 at a camera store named Sammy's in Southern California. And so now I've got two film magazines, both 12 exposure, so I can put black and white film in one and color in the other, or have different uh, film speeds in each one, and can easily switch them back and forth, because these film magazines have a dark slide. This slide protects the film, which would normally be in, in the aperture right there. So when you have the magazine off the camera, uh, you have the dark slide in place. I have the dark slide in place here, and in fact, you can't take the back off. There's an interlock, so if the dark slide is out, you are unable to remove the back. And if the dark slide is in, you're unable to take a picture. It locks the shutter. So it's all very cleverly uh, designed so that it's uh, somewhat idiot-proof. So that's the spare film magazine I have. I also have this little rubber lens hood. Uh, it's kind of handy to have, and when you don't need it, you can fold it back out of, out of its way so that it takes up less space in your camera bag. And like all of the lens accessories for the Hasselblad uh, series of cameras, this one is a bayonet mount. It's not a threaded mount. You just give it a third of a turn or so, and uh, it clips on and off just that easily. I've got a whole series of other filters uh, that I got with the camera. Um, most of them are for black and white film, so there's red, green, yellow, and orange filters. I've got a series of close-up lenses um, to allow closer focusing, and, um, and, a, and a polarizing filter. Also, I have this um, quick focusing handle. You attach this onto the lens, it clamps on, and then it allows you, you can unscrew this knob and swing it out to the side, tighten it up, so it just allows a little smoother and quicker focusing if, you, if you're in a hurry and, and, uh, and you want to focus the camera more quickly. Another accessory that came with the camera is this cable release. Rather low tech, you might think, but uh, it does have one additional feature. This little angle piece at the end of the cable release. And the purpose for that is the shutter button on the Hasselblad is right down here next to the lens. So when you have a cable release attached to the camera, that little angle helps to keep the cable release from getting in your picture accidentally. So that's pretty handy. Uh, I mentioned the dark slides that came with the magazines. Uh, somewhere along the way, either Lou or probably Lou um, purchased these extra commemorative dark slides to commemorate an, Hasselblad being on the moon with the NASA program, and this was the 10-year uh, anniversary of that, of that involvement of Hasselblad and NASA um, being used on the moon. These are kind of special. The camera came with all the owner's manuals for the body itself, for the, for the lens. Uh, there's a special manual for the pentaprism, for the film magazines, and that all came with the, uh, with the camera. Now, when I got the camera in 2014, I did it. Uh, I got it from my friend Walter as a gift. I had helped him sell off a bunch of old camera equipment that belonged to a friend of his who had deceased. And uh, as my thank you for helping him do that, he gave me his whole Hasselblad outfit, which I'm uh, eternally grateful to Walter for doing that. He's a good friend, and uh, and I treasure that uh, that he trusted me with his old camera. I had the camera for a number of years, and then I decided to um, look into getting a different focusing screen. The focusing screen that's built into the camera originally was rather dark and made it difficult to focus, and Hasselblad came up later with a, a different focusing screen uh, that was called the Acute Mat D, and uh, so I called a fellow by the name of Bill Maxwell, who actually manufactures his own focusing screens. He's back in Georgia. And, uh, and we talked about different uh, focusing screen options that I might have, and I settled on the Acute Mat D. He also buys up, buys up old uh, stock from Hasselblad dealers, and so he had an a, a actual Acute Mat D left over from uh, some camera store. I bought that from him, and he asked me when the last time the camera was serviced, and I said, probably never. And uh, so he said, well, there's a fellow he knows who does this, does the cleaning, adjusting, lubricating, uh, making sure everything is as it should be. 
and his name is Bill Moritz, and he lives in Virginia, Charlottesville, Virginia. So um, talked to Bill Moritz, and uh, he replaced all the light seals inside the camera. He also fixed one of the magazines. One of the magazines wasn't working quite right, so he, he repaired that. And um, so now I've got a camera that's in good shape and will probably last for another 40 years of use. A couple other accessories I have are these extension tubes. These allow you to focus up much closer. You lose infinity focus, but these fit uh, between the camera body and the lens. They have a coupling drive shaft because the uh, camera body uh, stops down the lens and triggers the shutter and that is done through a little um, drive shaft here inside the lens. Uh, and, um, and this extension tube has that drive shaft that allows them to be coupled. You can use these one at a time or both together, and uh, it allows, like I said, the, uh, the camera to be focused much, much closer so you can get into the macro range. Also with the camera came this teleconverter. This is made by a company called Komura, in Japan, made for the Hasselblad, therefore it has the proper coupling uh, for the lens so that it uh, maintains all the uh, automatic features of the lens. And um, I believe it enlarges about 1.4, 1.5 times. Uh, so the 80 millimeter standard lens becomes equivalent to about a 110 millimeter lens. And there's no meter in the camera. So also that came with the kit was this one degree spot meter made by Pentax, Asahi Pentax. So you look through this viewfinder here and that allows you to look out through this lens and uh, you press the trigger here and in the viewfinder of this piece you will you'll see a reading and that reading is in exposure values, EV10 or EV9, whatever. You can then transfer that EV reading to the lens. There are EV numbers right here and so you set the, the correct EV and then this lens uh, the shutter speed and aperture are coupled so that when you change one you're actually changing both uh, as you adjust uh, to a different uh, aperture and the shutter speed is linked. To dislink them you pull back on this little uh, lever and that allows them to be uncoupled so that you can set the proper EV Something that this lens also does, all, all mechanically of course, is as you're adjusting the aperture you see these two red lines. Well those red lines uh, demonstrate what the depth of field is. So as you adjust to smaller and smaller apertures the depth of field gets larger and larger. So that you can see here I'm focused from 50 feet down to just a little under 10 feet uh, as indicated by those two red uh, indicators. As I open up the lens, then the depth of field becomes smaller and smaller. All very clever. Um, so that's, oh, one last thing, not very exciting maybe, but I like it, and that is the strap. This is an official Hasselblad strap. It has these metal clips on the end of the strap, and they attach to these lugs on the side of the camera. And to attach them, you just press down on the front of this uh, clip. And when you do so, it opens it up and allows it to clip right onto the lug. And it makes it extremely secure and yet allows it to swivel freely. To remove it, you simply pick up on the back of it and slide it forward and remove it. So it's extremely easy to attach and remove and, uh, and very Hasselblad-like in its precision. Uh, engineering. So that is uh, the story of, of my Hasselblad and, and my history with it and the history prior to me and uh, I intend to continue using this camera and think about Walter and uh, thank him uh, each time I use it. So um, I talked with him just the other day. He's still alive and kicking and um, um, so thanks again Walter for gifting me all of this equipment uh, so I can use it. If you like the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.